Hello Unity fans! In the video before the last two short previews, I mentioned that we would consider visitors to our town, who could decide to stay as our citizens. However, it became clear that I would have to develop a proper task or job system before I would be able to handle the variety of actions a more complex town requires. So I've spent the last few weeks developing such a system. An important consideration I've tried to keep in mind from the start is that eventually, we would want to save our game and be in the same situation when we load it up again. This places some constraints on all our mechanics and systems. Let's see how the automated task queuing system turned out. I figured that all tasks would have to be broken down into simple chain steps to make saving the entire system easier. We've already implemented this idea with our harvesters, although it was quite cumbersome and required every unit to make decisions based on only its own state, without taking the rest of the map into consideration. For example, the woodcutter had a strict regime of walking to a tree, chopping it, sawing it and carrying home the logs, repeating this chain of actions indefinitely. For some unit types, this may be all that is required but we will eventually need more complex units and tasks, which would not work properly given the limitations of this simple independent cycle of tasks. So I've defined the most basic task to consist of possibly walking towards a target and starting an animation when arriving. If you save the game knowing where your unit is currently located, which segment the unit is heading towards, and which animation needs to start when he gets there, you can quite easily put your unit in the same situation upon loading, without having to save an excessive amount of information. But there's a bit more to it than that. Let's consider my new Unit Task class. Firstly, the task should be completed at a certain target segment on the map, which is the one the unit needs to walk to first. We also allow a position offset in case the unit shouldn't aim for the center point of the segment and we also need to specify a target position for the unit to look at when he gets to the segment. This ensures the task is performed with the correct rotation in place. Each task can only be performed by a certain unit type. Additionally, we may want to assign a task to a specific unit exclusively, for example not just any woodcutter, but one living in a specific cabin. Then, each task could apply to a specific building, or to a specific hex on the map, which is not necessarily the hex of the target segment the unit is walking towards. Finally, we need to know what kind of task this is. We use this double identifier, since a task like putting down your carrying basket could be a part of different chains of tasks, which should be managed differently. Knowing not only the subtask type, but also the type of the longer chain of tasks it forms part of, will allow us to decide which task should follow this one upon completion, as we'll see later. Now we need a main script to manage our tasks centrally. Our hex grid script is the heart of our game and a natural location for the tasks, since all units and buildings will have a reference to it. We create an empty list of unit tasks and methods to add and remove tasks to and from that list. Don't worry too much about the part that tries to immediately assign the task to an exclusive unit for now. We also have some alternative add task methods for specific situations, for example when continuing a chain of tasks and carrying over some of the previous parameters, or when you don't want to specify an offset, but they all just call the main method. So now, when we want to construct a building on the map, we can add the first task in the task chain for each hex involved in the construction as indicated by the blue markers. Or when you want some trees to be chopped down or stone to be gathered, these tasks are placed in the task queue. Note that there are no units around to perform the work yet, but the tasks are ready and waiting for any idle unit to come around. If we now add some workers, each one of them can look in the task queue for the first outstanding task they are able to perform and get on with it. And if more workers become idle or show up, they will also look for a suitable task and start working. This can be achieved by merely cycling through the tasks and picking the first one for which the specifics correspond to the unit looking for work. We actually cycle through twice, 
the first time looking for any tasks that require this unit exclusively, and if no exclusive task is found, cycling through again looking for any general task this unit can perform. We will enhance this process later by maybe looking only for tasks in a certain vicinity or distance from the unit, or even trying to optimize the allocation of tasks between available units to prevent a unit having to travel large distances to perform a task just because he was the first idle unit in the queue, while another unit close by could have been a better option. Either way, the unit can only be assigned to the task if he can find a path to the segment where the task should be performed. If he can find a path, we assign the task to him and remove it from the task queue. Now you will notice that the units actually perform entire task chains here. Putting down the carrying basket, chopping down the tree, sawing the wood, picking up the basket and walking back to unpack the basket are actually five tasks in a chain. How do the units perform these automatically? Let's have a look at the unit script to see how units are adjusted to handle the automated task queue. I should mention here that I could create a class for each unit type and let it inherit from a main unit class, allowing us to ring fence each specific unit type's behavior. However, I'm keeping all unit methods in one script for now, with if and switch statements to decide which behaviors to apply. So in the update method, if the unit is ready for orders, we either consider its current task if it has one, or allocate a new task. Depending on the action of that task, we call the appropriate method to kick off the task. If you've watched the previous videos, you may recall some of these tasks. However, they've now been reworked as part of the automated task system. Each one contains a setup task step that handles walking to the task if required and executing a specified action upon arrival. This can be as simple as starting a certain animation, or could be more complex, including adding more tasks to the queue upon completion. In this way, the entire chain of tasks can be cycled through by only originally assigning the first task to the unit. Upon completion of each step, the next step can be queued, and in many cases immediately assigned to the same unit, letting it just continue with the task chain. As soon as the chain has been completed, a new task is requested from the remaining list of tasks, starting the cycle all over again. I hope you've noticed that I have added some sound effects to the scene. They are linked to the animations, but the animations also perform another important task. Like in previous videos, I assign a connect point for each animation, and these connect points trigger the progress of certain tasks. For example, for each connect a short sound is played. Some other steps could also be executed, for example letting the trees shiver. For each group of connects, a bigger action is executed, for example progressing the construction of a building or adding a resource to the carrying basket. And finally, if enough groups of connects have passed, the task is flagged as completed, possibly adding the next task in the task chain. And there we have the main elements of the automated task queuing system in action. In the next video, we'll consider another mechanic I've been working on which is closely linked to the task system, namely the progressive construction of buildings. I have specifically not considered the brand new building class, which is another important piece of the puzzle here. I'll go into it in detail when we get to the progressive building construction, previewed in the previous video. We'd like our builders to construct buildings over time, rather than buildings just suddenly appearing. And if we have more than one builder, we'd like all of them to take part in the construction to speed it up. How all of this fits onto the map required some serious planning, which we'll cover next time. Please consider subscribing to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!